So just a quick word about um, transposing um, and also if we refer to in this video if we refer to the handout some chord progressions to get you started. Um, so in week three we spoke about taking a chord progression and then writing down numerals, um, numerics to represent that chord progression. And the reason why we do that is that we can take those Roman numerals and then apply them to a different key. Um, so we're able to alter the key of a piece of a piece of music. Um, now I guess the the common question with with that would be, well, why bother when we can just use a capo? Um, which are, which is which is a, f a fair point. Um, but in just using a capo all the time, we're kind of we're kind of missing an opportunity to explore chord progressions and to explore form and and discover what works and why it works and then perhaps use that for ourselves so you know we might discover that that part of the song that we really like there's a reason why we like that and it's because the chord goes from the first chord to the third chord and then we look at some other songs that we like and there's some bits that we really like and we discover that every time we're hearing these bits that we really like it's the first chord to the third chord and then when we start writing our own music well we start writing a lot of first to third chords um, so, so it's good to kind of take a song to bits, I guess, and explore it. Anybody who is like me and likes dismantling remote controls and clocks and other bits of stuff that you should just leave alone um, and I can never put back together will we'll understand the joy of just kind of taking something to, a, to apart just to see what's going on. Um, so the challenge this week is to... Have a look at the examples, so the 1, 5, 6, 4 example 1, um, example 2, 1, 4, 3, 4, 5, 1, and write those out in some different keys. Um, try to go for maybe two keys, three keys, brilliant, um, and then bring those to session next week. Once you've done that, take it a step further, so if you've got some minor chords in there, perhaps replace it with a minor ninth look back to the chord extension stuff so that we're starting to create some really rich chord progressions and we're aware of what's going on in those chord progressions and why it's working or, um, or why it's not working perhaps you know if, if you might discover that you just don't like the way that a certain progression sounds um, you could then maybe jot down above that chord progression um, to be soloed with using the Aeolian mode or the Ionian mode um, or or, or any given scale that you're quite enjoying the sound of at the moment. Bring that to session next week and then we'll have a jam with it. So we'll play through the chord progressions, we'll have a listen to some different scales and see how they sound and um, which is a very thoughtful um, way of approaching music. So we're not just jotting down some chords, busting out some solos on top of it, which is no discredit to that. But we don't learn much from doing that. So we can learn some 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 behaviours, some best practice techniques, and then ultimately, hopefully, forget them. And those best practice techniques just become part of the way that we approach music and the way that we play. Um, so yeah, write down some progressions, put some numerals on them, put them in different keys, apply some chord extensions, pick a scale to work through over on top of it. That's that's the challenge, the main challenge for for this week. So there's no actual demonstration in this video, um, so we need to go grab our pens, put our thinking caps on, um, and get composing.